because of a coaching staff change. Miami, University of Miami, every time someone leaves, you go, oh, that's pretty good, and then you realize there could be somebody in your conference that is someone adding or losing. Houston lost Shannon Dawson. Uh, Miami takes over. He's now the offensive coordinator under uh, at the Hurricanes, so there's a story there that affects a Big 12 staff. Well, and Utah, offensive coordinator Andy Ludwig staying at Utah. His buyout was a little bit high. Notre Dame decided that they broke down discussions, and so um, Andy Ludwig stays with the University of Utah Utes. Yeah, great great news for the Utes. Uh, curious to see where Notre Dame goes uh, after that. Uh, this is, I think, the second guy they kind of kicked the tires on, and it didn't get there for one reason or another. Uh, I do uh, like the, the Miami hire in that, Look, you can say a lot of things about the way Houston has played the last couple of years. One thing you can't say is they didn't score points, uh, and they've, they've certainly done that. I mean, that, that SMU game alone uh, probably got him, you know, could have gotten him 10 interviews uh, for, for play calling. So, yeah, I think that's a good move for them. Miami, interestingly enough, though, they kicked the tires on Major Applewhite, about, uh, about four or five of the guys, and this is where they settled. I'm curious to see what happens there, but they've had two good recruiting classes in a row. Um, they have not really hit in the transfer portal like they need to to be immediately improved. We'll see what happens in year two under Mario Cristobal. He's not really going anywhere, so he's got some leeway to do some things. But year one, you know, uh, let go of some coordinators. Others walked out the door, uh, and then – and then you had, you know, Charlie Strong left as well on the defensive staff because he didn't get promoted. Uh, and so uh, here you have um, – they've gone um, and signed two coordinators from smaller-type schools, but we'll see what happens at Miami. Yeah, um, you know, Tyler Van Dyke needs to be better than he was last year. Um, so get ready for the air raid. I mean, it's a mummy guy, and uh, that means, you know, you'd expect points and expect uh, – you know, a lot of throwing the ball around and uh, just exciting offense, but that's kind of, you know, par for the course. If you don't really have an exciting offense, it's notable, you know, nowadays. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Miami should be fun, up-tempo, throwing it around. And, um, you know, I think Houston just kind of got lost in the shuffle uh, but ended up finishing pretty strong last year, uh, despite the fact that, you know, early on in the year you wondered if they were going to even have a team that could stay together cohesively because they're fighting on the sidelines in the first, what, five weeks of the season it was. Uh, he already had had a couple tiffs, including one notable one caught on camera with, you know, players shoving mm -hmm. his teammate coming to the sidelines. And it just got off to a weird kind of bad start for them. But they, they rebounded quite nicely. I, I'm very intrigued by them going into this first year in the, in the Big 12, especially after having Clayton Toon you know, at quarterback for as long as they did. It seemed like he was there for forever. So, yeah, just more change for the Cougars. I mean, if you're Houston, though, I mean, you really that stressed over losing an offensive coordinator? No, because you've got, you know, the guy there in your head coaching position that's going to have a lot to say about your offense and a lot to do with your offense. So, uh, yeah, remains to be seen. But uh, on, the, on paper, I, I like it uh, for Miami and – you know, like Notre Dame, it's been a, a long slog of a search, it seems like, of, you know, name gets brought up next day. It's like no longer a candidate. You know, Paul's saying that it took a little while for them to find a guy. And, you know, for Notre Dame on that side of things, I would Ludwig stay and put, um, who knows how long it's going to take them because it seems like we've already gone through like five candidates that you thought would have yep. possibly taken the job at this point. So, yeah, one big answer in South Beach, and, and now we wait in South Bend to see exactly who's going to be, you know, running the show there, Tommy Reese. When he left, didn't expect it to, to probably take them. Not that it's been like a month or anything, but, you know, it's just um, taking them probably a little bit longer given the number of names that have popped up that they've seemingly had to move from one to the next to the next. And I, I wonder how many more they might have to rifle through. By the way, Dr. Uh, Lauren 